I do make more money in China. I make way more money in China. Way more money. There needs to be a rule book when you go to China because they don't tell you all the things that you need to do, right? One. Welcome to the Melanated Files. In this series, we highlight and share the stories of black people from across the globe. Remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and also follow us on social media for regular updates. Let's get into the interview. My name is Gary Hall McCaskill. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Why China? Um, well, I wanted something different. Uh, I wanted to see what else is out there other than Japan. And um, China was a, a, probably one of the second experiences I wanted to have. Uh, the Great Wall is there, Shanghai, you have Tiananmen Square. You have a whole different culture, you know, and it's something that I think that would be wonderful to, to check out and, and visit and see. Well, yeah, I mean, the Great Wall of China is great, you know what I mean? But it's China, you know what I mean? Like, it's the second largest economy in the world, right? And it went from, like, number 14 GDP to number two within a span of 10 or 15 years. And that, to me, was just amazing, right? Because you're moving, you have a whole country that's moving from one place to another place, and you want to find out that growth in between, how they do it, and how are they handling it, that type of... That, that type of change, right? And to me, I thought that was like, I just had to see it for myself. And that's what I felt like. It was probably the, the coolest thing to, to go see. Um, I first came there with a company called uh, EF. Uh, EF was a, a really good company. However, <laughs> they don't pay so well. Um, so I, I, had to, I had to quit that job um, and move to a different company. Uh, that pays me more. It was just just that. Like I love teaching, right? And uh, I want to have a chance to be able to to grow as a teacher. And one of the ways I was going to do that um, is by challenging myself. And right now I have a job um, teaching Montessori. Uh, Montessori is a technique that was that was built uh, from an Italian woman, um, and it's a natural way of teaching. And I think that it would be a great thing to learn, especially to to gain that information and take it back to America where I can therefore, you know, put it to use, you know. A lot of people ask me, they, they ask me about comparing Japan and China. Um, and I have to tell them, like, to be honest, you can't really compare Japan and China. You can compare America and China. Um, for, for example, right, um, if you do want to compare China and, Amer and Amer uh, China and Japan, you can in this way. They're Asian. They know where they, they they know that they're Asian. That's pretty much about it where it comes to comparisons. Um, China has a whole different set of rules, right? Um, I, they have a lot of the rules that Japan has, but they just don't give a damn. They don't follow it, right? Um, Japan has it's it's completely different in the sense that they're very isolated, so they don't really want to have anything to do mm, I don't know I, I don't know really how to put it but I would say that China has like just this 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 knack for learning um, so I teach English and as an English teacher you want to have people that really like you teaching right um, and just in China like they really want to learn English they really do like it uh, Japan they, they do it for for fashion I'm learning English for to 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 get to, to to meet people, right? Not really to actually learn it for money. And China's all about that money, yo. All about that money, son. It's just straight up gangster with it. Um, you go talk. You talk to a person in China, like, why are you trying to learn English? They'll tell you, money. I'm like, why? They're like, because I want to get a better house. I want to be able to make make something with my, for my family. That doesn't really happen in Japan, right? Um, so that comparison between America and, and China, well, they, they care about me, right? It's a me society, just like America. America is all about me. It's like, like, like De La Soul, me, myself, and I, you know what I mean? They're all about themselves. Um, they care, they're, and they're straightforward too. So Chinese people like you will ask them if you like something. And then the same question in Japan, you know, they oh, do you like this? They're like, oh, ma, ma, in Janai, it's good. But in, in China, you ask them, do you like this? And they don't like it. They'll say, nah, I don't like that. I ain't with that. 
and that's just real and I, I like that about it. you know what I mean being in China uh, is is a really a big wake-up right um, you you have to run on your own you can't just let you know nobody's gonna really show you how in like the ropes you're gonna have to like learn but the good thing is that you have a large community, especially for black, uh, black people. There's a large community of black people. Um, there's WeChat groups that are there to help you out, but they'll just give you the deep, they'll give you like the, the roundabout about it. And then you have to go do it yourself. Um, the people are wonderful. The food is great. Only thing bad is the pollution. Um, they take it out of proportion in a lot of ways, but it is bad, right? Like you need to wear a mask. Um, a lot of the times it's something that you should do. Um, also, like if you're if you're just if you're just visiting, sometimes you'll come there on a on a day and it'll be clear. You're like, I heard the pollution is like, bad and it's really nice out here. But then like you wait a couple of days and it'll be gray again. And you're like, what the hell happened? Well, the reason why that is because a lot of people like when people come, like dignitaries when they come to the China, the China cuts off all the all the um, the factories. So then now it's open, like it's free, and it's clear, and that's that's just not how it is on a normal day. Population. So China is about 21 million people in Beijing, right? What is that like? So. You wake up in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, and go down to the train station, and you suspect that nobody's gonna be up. Well, not, <laughs> there's people there. You know what I mean? Like, every day, all day, it's people. Like, if I had a Thanos, like, Infinity Gauntlet, I'd be like, gone, gone, because it's so many freaking people, and it's just, it's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? Um, they don't follow the rules like in Japan. You have people line up for the train. When you get off the train, people line up. No matter how long that, that line takes, they'll, they'll line up. Not in China. Bottleneck. Straight up bottleneck. Boom, they don't care. They just get off and they just hustle and they try to get somewhere. They're in a, they're in a hurry to get nowhere, right? And that's, that's that comparison between those two. Rules of the streets. Uh, I, I say it's like... Um, so it's like wearing a condom, right? It's all good until you end up in a hospital. You know what I mean? Because in China, there's no rules for like where people can drive. So you have scooters running all over the place. So you have to be careful because they will hit you and you will end up in a hospital. Work and everything else is great. Um, I love both countries. I can't put one above the other. Um, I do make more money in China. I make way more money in China, way more money. Okay, so um, the average, sal the yearly salary of a Chinese, uh, Chinese person in Beijing is about $17,000 per year. That's $17,000 per year, right? I'm well over 40. And that being said, I take premium taxis everywhere well. Like everywhere, well, it's it, I, I when I go on a cab, it's always premium, um, which is another great thing about China, which is like uh, you have this thing called Didi, uh, you have WeChat, and with WeChat, uh, you don't need to you don't need your wallet. You literally just pay for you can pay for hookers with with your phone. Like there's beggars, like there's beggars out in China that have like they little they have like little trays and they have a QR code inside of it. And you can literally give them money through your WeChat. Like they're like, uh, I need money. And you're like, all right. And you just scan the little thing. And you're like, wait a second. Where the hell you got a phone from? You homeless. What the hell you doing with a phone? But they got one. They're like, all right, okay, I get some money. Can you scan my code? I'm like, yeah, I can use this code. Like, mm, boom, there you go. But no, that's just, that's just how it is, right? Comedy, uh, as I'm a comic out in China. So I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of, I have a lot of ways to, not a lot of ways. Um, as a comic in China, I'm able to meet a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot, as I said before, there's a lot of, um, 
there's a large community of black people. There's a large community of foreigners there. So I'm able to to reach out and, and, and that's that's not a community I want to reach to, right? Um, as a comic in, in Japan, it's limited, right? You have like uh, Osaka, uh, Tokyo, and Fukuoka, which is good places, but there's not a lot of people coming out to these comedy spots. Um, it's starting to get better. Um, like they have Dave Chappelle coming out here. They had, um, they had uh, Hannibal Burris come out. And not, that's a really good thing, but those are like far and few between, right? And that'll get a lot of people, but that still won't get your regular, regular day folks. And as a comic in China, I'm able to do comedy like all the time. Shanghai is doing comedy shows freaking uh, damn near every day. So is Hong Kong. So you just, you know, you get your practice in and that's where it's at, right? You got to get, get better at any craft that you do. You got to get that practice in and that's where I'm trying to get at, you know. Um, learning more about... Uh, YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> YouTube. No YouTube in China. Yeah. Uh, that's a big problem. Um, that go, all, all that being said, uh, there's no porn. So uh, no porn in China. So I have to have a VPN. So it kind of takes you back to like the VCR days, right? Like where you have to like download your stuff and wait for it to download. And you're sitting there waiting with tissue in hand, like waiting for it. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot of things you have to get used to. Um, but I like, I have a big apartment. Um, I have a big screen TV. China's probably watching me through the TV because they probably have a camera inside of it. Uh, but it's all good, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's seen a naked body before. It's just me. Um, I don't really care. Uh, but I have a really good life. Um, I have a lot of good friends. Um, and that's one thing I, I can say is that being, I, I spent eight years in Japan and I have about mm, zero Japanese friends. Uh, in China, being there about seven months, I've met about six or seven people that I can actually call friends, you know what I mean? Like that people that call you up and say, hey, how you doing? Um, are you okay? When are you coming back? You know what I mean? Like that's caring, right? That's people that actually care about who you are, unless they're spies, you know what I mean? Like, other than that, they're really good friends. Um, I think so. So ambitions, uh, ambitions in China is to one, learn a language. Uh, if you don't know, China's number two in the world and don't get caught slipping out there because that's the next move. Um, learn the language so that you're able to, it's another tool in your toolbox of life. And I'm pretty sure that if you, if you learn a language that people are gonna be speaking widely which is Chinese because they're <laughs> everywhere, right? I mean, like, you go, you go to America, you go to LA, there's a little China. You go to New York, there's a little China. You go to Japan, there's a little China. You ain't going nowhere down there, little America. Ain't no little New York. Ain't no little Chicago. So China's where it's at if you want to learn language. I think it's good. What do I like the most about China? Um, I like the atmosphere. Uh, the Fuinki, right? I, it's it, it's huge. Um, it's big. It's growing. It's a megapolis, right? It's 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 a whole different world, right? Um, coming from Japan, you're coming from this really small island that's very unique, and then going to China is this huge explosion of just development and construction and building and people are trying to learn but also they're they're curtailed by what they can say and what they can do by their government but they're slowly trying to fight back and move forward so you're literally watching a country try to progress with oppression being, being oppressed and progression right it's it's that it's that is that rubber meets the road kind of thing going on in China right now. Uh, I think that's a very unique thing and that's probably one of the best things I like about it. The least I like about it, um, pollution. Um, I don't want to go outside and wear a mask every day. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna have to deal with like my life being shortened uh, because of the pollution. 
when I came to Japan, um, the average person in Japan lives to like a hundred and something years old, right? So like, just by being in Japan, my life has drastically lengthened, right? My, as a black man, I think we only lived to like 60 damn near. Like Michael Jackson died at 50, Prince died at 51, Bernie Mac at 50, Heavy D died at like 40. I mean, I'm not Heavy D size, but at the same time, like being in Japan, you, you it's a better living, right? Like, it's a lot of things that you do, it's literally small things that add up into the aggregate of how your lifestyle can actually be, how your life can be lengthened. Um, but in China, with the pollution, who knows, you know what I mean? I might walk around half cancer the next couple of years. So um, that's the least thing I like about China. My favorite Chinese food is not in China. It's, it's Geno's Tao Chicken. And you ask somebody in China if you have Geno's Tao Chicken, they'll look at you with a gas face. They'll be like, what the f are you talking about, dog? So you can't. There's no, um, I guess I would say like what traditional Chinese food I like is, I like hot pot, right? Um, hot pot is kind of cool. Uh, you're able to, uh, it's like this, it's kind of like uh, shabu shabu. Or you have this huge pot and you basically put all your vegetables and meats in it and you can have a spicy side and you can have a regular side and the spicy side of it is Sichuan uh, spices that kind of make your lips numb um, it's not like really spicy like what we what we Westerners might consider spicy but it is it's kind of cool okay uh, best advice I have is uh, my dad told me when I was young he said, while you're living, experience as much as you can because experience is what is going to make you a better person, right? Um, that's probably one of the best advices. Uh, advice about Japan um, came from a couple white guys that are business owners here. Uh, they, I asked them about like making money in Japan. They said, get the hell out. And I said, what do you mean? They said, get the hell out. Get out of Japan. Go back to wherever you're from. Get a job that can send you back to Japan. And then when they send you back, Japan's gonna pay for it. So they're gonna pay you money. That's how you make money in Japan. Um, that's one way. Um, but there's a lot of other ways too, right? Um, there's a lot of people that are, that are doing startups. There's a lot of people that you might see on this channel, right? That have uh, been very successful. Um, life advice for China. Uh, three T's, don't talk about them. Uh, Tiananmen. Uh, Taiwan and Tibet. Uh, if you don't know, look it up. I'm not going to talk about it because uh, it's on YouTube and I don't need nobody. I don't need the extra stress, right? Um, but you can see what, what Trump did and, and, and how he got in trouble with calling the president over in Taiwan, right? Um, life advice is, you can get it from everywhere, man. But the best thing is just keep living and, and have as much experience as you, as you can. My earliest memory in life? Wow. Wow, it's, it's, I feel like a documentary I'm about to get. I'm gonna start crying over here. Um, I guess my earliest experience in life would be uh, living with my, going to my grandmother's house every summer. Um, I would wake up and it would be summer, like we just got out of school and you know, you wake up and then like your dad gets everybody in the car and we all go down to grandma's house and that kind of like just going to go see my grandma and, and it's just me and my brother and it was just that was the beginning of summer like you knew summer was here when you started to go to your grandma's house that's my earliest memory that and picking a switch from uh, a tree because you you did something wrong and having to pick a switch from the tree to get your ass whooped is kind of a it's a memory that you won't forget so my black experience in china all right uh so a lot of people think that there's this stereotype about black men uh, having, you know, big, yeah, uh, some Chinese people think that, that, like, that's, like, way, like, they're scared of it, um, but, <laughs> uh, they'll ask you about it, right, um, uh, the same thing in Japan, too, like, you go to onsen, and you have, like, these grown men looking at you, like, you know, <laughs> it's, like, Dude, what's up, man? <laughs> Gay, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't wear number two, boy. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's, but I guess like the black experience in China, they don't, they don't bother you. Um, 
there is no there is no uh, police looking at you right uh, you can look at the cops you can say hello but it's a very militarized country also so um, I feel safe right? I feel safe I feel I don't feel like there's no problem with me being a black man in the country um, there is racism there um, it's really funny I found out one of the words that they call uh, black people one of the racist words is a, a, a black ghost and I thought that was like the coolest like slur you can have because yo I would love to be a black ghost like I'm like a ninja son it's like yo who's that black ghost I'm like all right poof, I'm out you know what I mean um, that's pretty much it so the funniest thing that happened to me in China um, when I first got there uh, okay so there there needs, there needs to be a rule book when you go to China because they don't tell you all the things that you need to do, right? One, you need to have WeChat, right? Two, uh, you can't drink the water. And three, uh, there's not always toilet paper everywhere. So I went to my job and I got, I went to my job the first day and I had to go to the bathroom, right? So I go into the, it's in an office building. So it's, you, you think this is a really nice office building. Walk to the bathroom, you know, number two, and I'm looking for the toilet paper. Well, I see a bucket and then it's, and I'm like, it's a bunch of toilet paper sticking out of the bucket. I'm like, oh, okay, that's where they, it's China. Maybe they do it different here. They put it in buckets. I reach down in the bucket and pull out a piece of toilet paper that was already being used. Yeah, uh, it wasn't cool, yo. So I just tore off that piece <laughs> that wasn't used and went to work and cleaned my ass <laughs> and went back to work. And I was like, yo, what's the deal? He's like, oh yeah, you gotta bring your own toilet paper to the bathroom, we didn't tell you that. And I was like, word, really? You would think you would have tell somebody that, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was, there was like soap and water, but no toilet paper. Like you have to bring your own toilet paper to it. All right, so as a black guy, um, we, we, I like, I have rhythm. So I'll get on the train and I'm listening. I just listen to that Daytona Pusha T and I'm just sitting there listening to it, you know, and I'm, I'm just, and I'm bobbing my head and I'm like, uh. I'm just listening to them. I'm in it. I'm in it, right? I'm in that moment. You know, you're like you listen to some good music. You got a bump, and you're just trying to chill. You just get through your day. You know what I mean? And I look over, and these Chinese people are like looking at me, and they're like, "What the hell? What the hell is this guy doing?" And I was like, "Yo, this this is hard, right?" So then, like, I, I take out my earbud. I'm like, "Yo, this push T," and I, and I toss it to him. And then like, he's like, oh yeah, that, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, I like that, I like that. And then like, then he started talking to his boy and he was like, um, he was like, yo, 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 he's speaking to him in Chinese, like shama, shama, shama. Then all of a sudden he's like saying nigga. And I was like, what? And I'm like, wait a second. But then my boy told me, and I remember this before, is that in China, they say nigga a lot, right? But what nigga means for them is like this or that, right? So he's sitting there like, uh, 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 yo, 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 nigga, nigga, this nigga, right? And then look, pointing at me, and I'm thinking like, did he call me a nigga? I'm like, you listening to my music, you call me a nigga? Nigga, please, you better get my damn headphones back, my bust your ass. You know what I mean? But he wasn't really doing that, he was actually just, anyways, but that was the funniest thing that happened to me blackwise, is just hearing that word, that trigger word, right? Yeah. You walk anywhere, you just like, nigga, nigga, nigga. And look, and Chinese people, and it's cool. I know y'all on the YouTube, I know y'all looking at this. It's good that y'all, that's you, know, you can say nigga all you want, but just don't look at us when you do it. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be like in the store, be like, shimmy, shimmy, nigga, nigga, nigga. Nigga, nigga, nigga. And I'm like, no, don't, don't look at me when you say nigga. Yeah, it's a Chinese word. Uh, nigga is, is na, naga, naga, which means this or that. Uh, the general attitude for black people in China, they like us. Um, they like who we are. Uh, they like the culture. Um, rap, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't looked out and, and seen it, but it's, it's taken over the world, to be honest, right? It's all over the world. It's, 
in Spain, it's in France, it's in Germany, it's all around, and that culture is ours. It started in Brooklyn, right? Just from a ba- from basement parties back in the back in the day. You know what I mean? I grew up learning what hip hop was with Ron DMC, LL Cool J, Cool Herc, these you know pioneers of hip hop. You know what I mean? And the Chinese people are just learning what it is, and they're they're getting into it. Um, but it's being quashed by the uh, the powers that be, right? Um, they seen Black Panther, they think it's cool, right? It's like one of the, it's a really big movie, right? Um, there's a lot of Africans in, in China, um, which are in there, they're beautiful. Uh, they have a really great culture and they're really good, uh, I guess, ambassadors of what blackness is, right? Uh, there's Americans out there too. And it's, it's just a, a whole different world for them, you know? And they, they're experiencing it through us, so. Hmm. So, uh, black related products, uh, cocoa butter, son, cocoa butter. That's what life is all about, right? You know what I mean? Like you got problems, it's cocoa butter and Robitussin. Can you find those products? Yes. You just have to, you just have to get into these groups. Blacks in China, uh, it's a WeChat group. There are black Americans in China. There's a WeChat group that you can, you can, uh, get in contact on WeChat and they have all the products. Uh, if they don't have them, they know somebody who does. So you can definitely go and check it out. So uh, black barbershops in China, I don't know, cause I'm bald. Uh, this happened uh, around my, 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 my early uh, 30s. And it's just, I didn't have to worry about barbershops after that. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't really know. I know there are um, some some so black barbers out there. Right? Yeah, this is all this is straight Mach three, baby. I mean, like it's just shaving cream, just hit it up. You know, um, every every other day I uh, shave my own. I shave myself. Um, are there black barbershops? I don't really know. I think they are. I'm not really sure where they're actually located at, but they're out there. If I could change one thing in the world, um, probably the way that black people communicate with each other. Um, for example, like right now, like I'm here, I'm talking to you, uh, you're out there on YouTube and you're looking at this and you're seeing that black people are in different places. And it's not to say that we're not doing well now. I think we can do better. Like I'm, I'm sure we can. Um, I, I want black people to be able to, to communicate and, and, and learn from each other and not have, and, and grow together. There's a lot of other cultures out there that are that work together and they're, they're doing a lot with themselves. And I think I see that in the black community, but I just want that to be changed, to be maybe expanded more, you know, right? To be able to get out there and, and reach more people. Um, I like the fact that you're, you're in wherever you're at, if you're in Japan, you're in America, you're in Africa, um, just keep working at it, keep, keep pushing, but bring more black people into this community. Um, I like what uh, Killer Mike is doing uh, with uh, his show on Netflix. Uh, he's bringing more black people and changing the way people think about things, right? Um, for too long, black people have thought only a certain way. And um, I think now that if we continue to, to grow, maybe expand a lot more, maybe our communication become better and in our community, we can become stronger. And, and that's just, that's because I, I wanna have, you know, kids one day that are gonna, that we're not gonna look at and see that's only 13% of the population. I want it to be more, right? Like when I tell people in China, they're like, why is it so, why are you so worried about black people? I'm like, well, because we're only 13% of the population in America and that's of the world, right? There is no more after that. And I want that to change. So if you're asking me, what do I want to change? I want to change our communication to make our co- make our community stronger. So, um, <laughs> who I want to have dinner with, dead or alive? Prince. Prince, the god of purple, man. Like, I grew up with Prince. You know that whole deal with Michael Jackson and Prince being like, who's the who's the best? Prince won it with me a long time ago. Purple Rain, that album was was outstanding. <laughs> Knowing that he can play every instrument in his, every instrument that he that he, uh, 
that he uses, he can play from keyboard to saxophone to drums. And the man was a, a genius at a guitar. Uh, over th over 13 albums. Um, it's just, he's, he's a god, you know what I mean? And, you know, in the end, when he's, he was one of the, the biggest philanthropists in the world. Uh, he gave to so many different uh, people. What he did was just amazing, but he didn't even, he didn't publicize it. He didn't want people to know about it. Because it's not, a, it, it wasn't, to him, it wasn't about him being like this guy and what he did. It was just that it was the right thing to do, right? And I want to learn from that kind of person, right? He's influential to me. That, and I want to see if he floated, for real. Because people always say, like, when you see Prince, he always floating. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to see, like, how he walks, you know what I mean? It's a presence, right? Uh, my proudest accomplishment to this day would be uh, becoming a Marine. Um, uh, that, that propelled me for everything else in my life. So I'm a college graduate. Uh, I, was, uh, I went to Temple University. Um, I was the first black uh, student body president at Temple University of Japan. Um, I double major in international affairs, political science, but that all stems from me becoming a Marine and having the ability to challenge myself and push myself forward. And I think that if it was one because of the Marine Corps, um, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, not in Japan, anyways, because Japan was given to me as my first duty station, right? And when I came back, it was that confidence of knowing that I can travel to another place and actually live in another country because I was in I was in the military and Japan was like my first duty station. I saw what it was like, right? So that that was what pushed me to get where I'm at now. So I would say that would be the biggest accomplishment so far. I guess my uh, my biggest lesson learned to this day would be believing yourself. Um, you you got to you know um, and tell people what you do. I mean, don't. Sometimes people are they 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 don't really really they really put themselves down. Don't don't be your worst enemy. You you want your own worst enemy. You know, don't don't be your own worst enemy, right? It's okay to be like, I've done this and I've did this. And if you do something wrong, dude, okay, I did it wrong. Try again the next day. Don't give up on yourself. Like, that's the biggest thing, right? Okay, so if everybody was listening to me uh, right now, um, I would say uh, travel. Travel and see this world, man. You got one life and you got to get out there and see it because you don't know who you're going to meet. I would never be able to be here with you right now on YouTube, on these, these platforms, if I didn't travel, right? I would never be able to speak a different language as I speak Japanese. I would never be able to have that if I didn't travel. Um, I never would know what it would be like to go to Angkor Wat or go to Phnom Penh, to go to the, the Great Wall of China or to go visit the temples in, in Taiwan, I mean, uh, in Thailand, um, or go see the Eiffel Tower, or go see London Bridge, um, or even Big Ben, like if I didn't travel. So travel is probably the biggest thing I would say, like travel, because this world is wonderful. If you're trying to learn Japanese, um, come in with a blank slate. Uh, there is no one-to-one -one ratio a lot of times with Japanese. Um, they have a different way of rules of learning things. You have to learn it the way they do. Don't expect it to be the same as English. You're going to have a fight between your English side and your Japanese side. And you want to be you, but in Japanese you can't because Japanese doesn't really allow that to happen. Right, you have to learn um, how they use the language. Yeah, I mean, just as much as how we use the language in America. Um, as a black man, you know, you go to the hood and you go talk to your friends. It's a different way that you might use the language compared to how you would use it in a professional setting. Right, you gotta learn how to code switch. What does China do really well? Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do they do really well? 
China has a, I guess I would say they know how to deal with um, business. Um, wow, what do they do well? Like, they do a lot of things well, right? But it's how they did it. I mean, you look at currency manipulation, manipulation, right? That's not a good thing. But is it? They're number two, right? They're number two in the world. Uh, you look at like uh, Huawei, right? Huawei copied the iPhone and they made a better version of it. And now it's like one of the top five phones in the world. But they copied it. Is it? Is it good? I don't know. You tell me, right? Write in the comments. Let me know. What, what do they do good? I and mean, they copy a lot of things. They make things better. Um, oh. If you come to Beijing, you have to go to the Great Wall of China um, because it's an experience of lifetime. It's one of the seventh wonders of the world. Anytime you ever get a chance to see one of the seventh wonders of the world, go. Like, don't waste time. Don't, don't give me that excuse like, oh, I might, I'll, I'll check it out next time. No, go do it because you never know when you're ever gonna see it again. Um, it's beautiful, it is stunning. It's, it's huge, it's worth it. I think one of the biggest misconceptions for me would be like that it's not safe. Um, people think it's not safe and it's not true. It's very safe. Um, other than pollution and crossing the street, <laughs> you're pretty much safe in China, right? Um, that's a common misconception. Um, another misconception would probably be like the food, right? Like people think, oh, what's the food like? You know what I mean? Are they eating chicken legs and like, and like feed or whatever? I'm like, yeah, they eat that. But they also got a McDonald's, they got KFC, uh, they got tacos. They ain't got Taco Bell, but that's a good thing, right? Um, they have all Western foods. They have all types of foods, really. Um, it's a common misconception is like their food is not good. Okay, it's awesome. Um, I, I would put Chinese food over Japanese food. Other than fish, like Japanese, like their fish is really great here. But I, I, I just wouldn't, I don't really eat the fish in, in China because it's China. <laughs> what do you mean by it's China? Well, I mean, so if you ever, if you ever fly to China, um, get a window seat. Because when you go over, you're going to understand why they're number two G, uh, GDP in the world because they make everything. And along with making everything is that they ship everything. And being that they ship everything, you see all these ships inside the waters and all these ships create pollution. There's no EPA in China. There isn't. So when you're flying across the waters, you're gonna see a murky water and whatever lives in there I ain't putting my mouth on it, okay? I'm not eating it. So that's why I don't eat the fish there. <laughs> Do I encourage black people to go to China? I encourage black people to go every goddamn where. Go places, but black people. I'm seriously, I got my cousin right now. She's gonna be coming to China, come visit me um, next month. I'm happy, go, go do it. And don't tell me you ain't got money because they're like, oh, when you coming back home? And they're like, when you coming here? Oh, I ain't got the money. No. It costs as much as it costs for me to go home that you come here. It's the experience that you're going to come see me. Um, travel. Like I said, man, you, you have to. Life is all about experiences, man. It's about experiences and responsibilities. Put one on yourself. Go do it. If you're coming to China, uh, the first thing you need to do is get a VPN and bring some lotion. Um, because you might be hard pressed to find cocoa butter. But we do got a Walmart though. We got a Walmart and a Sam's Club, son. We got a Sam's Club, that's off the chain. I get Australian beef all the time. Um, but before you come to China, get a VPN. Um, and just know that there is video cameras everywhere and they will videotape. They will, anywhere you go, you're gonna see street lights and stuff like that. And there's, there's over a million cameras in China. Uh, probably just as many cameras there are people.
So they're gonna see you. So don't do nothing wrong. You see what happened? What Lavar uh, uh, Ball's son? He got he got caught up in China. One of his boys tried to steal some sunglasses. Okay, don't be the one. My secret superpower would be the fact that um, I, I I don't I don't take it I don't take it too seriously. Like my secret, my I guess my secret power would be like. Giving, giving a damn when you have to give a damn. You know what I mean? Sometimes you, people go out there and they, they give a damn when they shouldn't give a damn. And you gotta know, you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, you know? Um, for me, it would be, that would be my superpower, is, is, is knowing when, when and when not to do, you know, give, a, give a damn about certain things. And I mean, care about the people who care about you. If you're looking for me, uh, you can find me under uh, Facebook at Mac Hall McCaskill, or you can find me on uh, Instagram, IG, at Badass Marine 97, um, or you can find me on, uh, on WeChat. Um, well, the Chinese already know. You can ask any Chinese person, they'll probably give you the information because they got it. You know what I mean? You can find me out there. I'm on a comedy scene out in China, uh, Comedy Club China. It's in Beijing. We doing the most, baby. Come on, check us out. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to share your story or have us visit your region, send us a message on any of our social media platforms or via our website. That's good.